Lawrence Fish again, bringing you a video from St. Petersburg, Florida. It's January, it's uh, pretty warm, it's about 69 degrees today. Um, didn't have to work today, it's Friday, so it's a good day to get some boat maintenance done. Um, for annual maintenance, I'll do some of the basic stuff. First thing I'll do is I'll look at the batteries. I'll check for uh, corrosion, I'll check the electrolyte levels, make sure everything's good. Second thing I'll check, I'll check the uh, fuel system, I'll check the fuel tank, I'll make sure the, the level actually matches what's on the, uh, the fuel gauge. Then I'll check the uh, fuel water separator, make sure there's no water in the bowl, make sure the, uh, the filter looks good. Then I'll, then I'll take a look at the engine. What I'll do with the engine is the real basic stuff. I'll take a look at the fuel filter, I'll pop that off, take a look at it. I'll take a look at the oil, change the oil filter to an oil change. I'll pop open the crankcase, check the, fil or the oil and air, which shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, I don't have any leaks, so I shouldn't have any mistakes. So I just checked the thing. batteries. One of the batteries was low. I know it was going to be low. Uh, it's only about two years old, but I think it's about time to replace it. It was a cheapo, deep cycle Walmart battery anyways. It was just to get us through the boatyard, which <laughs> we've been out of the boatyard for a year, so it's probably about time to replace it. So I just warmed up the engine. All I did was run it for about 10 minutes here at dock. I ran it at a high idle and just put it in gear, and that's it. So this is where I get to my engine dipstick which is kind of hard to open I have to remove the stairs so basically this is it this is my 18 slash 20 horse Yanmar 2 GM 20 F this panel over here I open this up if I can get it open and this is how I check the dipstick I'll check the oil in a second all right so basically these are a couple things I'm gonna check real quick I'm gonna check the tension on the belts this is the freshwater belt. This is slash alternator belt, which looks good. This is the raw water belt, which looks good. I don't see any leaks. Here's the fuel filter. This is the heat exchanger. I'll check that by looking in here. This is the overflow. It's hard to see, but it's right between low and full, so that's good. This is the air filter. I'll take that off in a couple of minutes. And of course, this is where you put the oil in. And this is your compression lever. Yeah, another thing to check when you're down here is to go ahead and check the, uh, the throttle. Make sure that runs smooth. Maybe lube it up a little bit. And also in the back, you probably can't see it because it's dark, is the, uh, the shift change letter, lever. I'll probably uh, oil that up too. All right, for, for this engine and for the, uh, the temperatures we have around here, I use 15W40. So to change the oil basically is pretty easy. Here is a vacuum oil pump. Basically all you do is you take this this rigid tube, you put it down the dipstick, which is right here. If I can find it with one hand. You pull out the dipstick. Basically you're gonna insert this tube all the way down as far as you can get it down a dipstick loosen the oil cap on the top and then you just start to pump it's a slow process it'll probably take about 10 15 minutes all right so here we go i'm gonna start pumping you should see some uh, hopefully some oil come out So when you're almost done, you, uh, you'll start to hear a, a gurgling sound. Hopefully you can hear that. All right, so what just happened there was the, uh, it started gurgling, so it seemed like it was almost done. But I think what happened was I don't know if oil should, came out that it should have come out. If the uh, I had to pull the tube back out and put it back in. It probably hit the side of the, uh, the sump down there and curled up. So, so now we, we try again. And now it's sucking oil back out. With these little engines, you should probably get about maybe a quart and a half, quart and three quarters out. Uh, I think it depends too on the angle that your engine sits. So like I said, this will take a while. I've already been going for at least 10 minutes. It does really help to heat up the engine first and maybe throw in some reggae tunes. Oh, and uh, something else I forgot to mention while we're waiting is uh, after you warm up the engine, eh, let it sit for about five or 10 minutes. All that uh, oil that got uh, kicked up in the engine needs to uh, drip back down in the pan. All right, so when I pull this tube out, it's gonna be covered with oil. It's gonna be really messy. 
Make sure you have a, a paper towel or a rag handy and take it right off the boat. Don't even try to lay it down anywhere. Just get it off the boat because it will get everywhere. Here's also a tip. The, uh, when you pull it out, hold it straight up and then put a couple pumps on it and suck the last little bit of oil out so when you put it, uh, when you put it down, the oil doesn't leak out of it. So uh, here's the oil filter. This is actually a, uh, let's see what brand it is. It's a Stens. It's for a John Deere, but it also fit a, a Yanmar. So if you want to save a couple of bucks, you can go and go with a uh, different brand filter. All right, so changing the filter, you want to do this before you put oil in, or it's just going to leak out all over the place. So the trick here is uh, go ahead and get a rag ready, put it under there, because it's going to drip a little bit of oil. No big deal. You just don't want it to go down in your bilge. Now, it's not the easiest thing to access, but it's usually generally hand tight. See, a little bit is going to leak out. It's more than you think it's going to be. So get it out of there quick. All right, so that leaked probably maybe a tablespoon or two. So put that down. Go ahead and clean up a little bit. Yummy. All right. Hey, see, I'm just cleaning up wood drip so it doesn't get down in a bilge. All right, so a little bit did get in a bilge. I'm gonna go ahead and put a rag down there real quick. Get it before it gets too far down there. All right, so that's what we want to do. Take the new filter. Dip your finger in a little bit of the oil from the old filter. And go and uh, lube up that seal pretty good. You don't really have to goop it on there. You just want to uh, not see any dry spots. Line it back up. Make sure uh, it doesn't cross thread. And just screw it back on there. Now this thing does not need to be stupid tight like the alternator belt. You just want it snug and hand tight. Basically as tight as you can get it without having to use any tools. <clears throat> now what I'll do is after I run it for a little while I'll, I'll check it again make sure it's not leaking. But that's all there is to change an oil filter. Looking at the front of the engine this is your engine stop cable, and this is your throttle cable. Usually I'll just hit it with a couple of shots of lube, just a little bit. Like I said, I don't have any problems with these, it's just preventative maintenance. And then I'll go up to the helm, and I'll exercise it a little bit. Since I'm not 100% sure how much oil came out, I'll start out with one quart because I know over a quart came out. So what I'll do is I'll put a quart in, I'll let it go to the bottom of the crankcase, let it sit for a couple minutes, and then I'll check the, uh, the dipstick and see where we're at. Nice and slow. Yeah, if you have a diesel, this is uh, one job that you don't want to put off. The diesel will run for a really long time as long as you uh, give it a little love. Clean air and clean oil. Since, uh, since I'm waiting for the oil to drain to the bottom of the, uh, the sump, basically I just topped off the, uh, the antifreeze. Since the engine isn't hot, I didn't go all the way up to the, the, the full line. It was down here, so it wasn't very very far off, but something you gotta look at every once in a while. Alright, so after checking the oil, that's after one quart. It is it's above the minimum line. However, here's the full line. I think it's the full line. Uh, I usually run it right about in the middle. So I'll put maybe another half quart in there and we'll see what happens. So after putting another half a quart in. The line's right about there. That's right about where I want it. I might just put a, a tad bit more in, but that's it. 
I don't want to go too full. Alright, so I'm sure you can see that. That's that's a tad above where it usually is. However, that's okay because remember after I start it back up, the, the oil filter has to fill back up full of oil. And that's that's probably at least half a cup, three quarters of a cup of oil. So what I'm going to do now, put the dipstick back in. Pull the funnel out. Put the oil cap back on. And I'm going to start her up and run her for a couple of minutes. And then I'll check the oil level again. Hey everybody, it's Orange Fish again. It's January. It's not very cold down here in Florida. However, I still need to do my annual maintenance. Today, I'll be taking a look at the engine. I'll take a look at the fuel. I'll take a look at the fuel water separator. Uh, there's the puppy. I'll take a look at the uh, the oil, the oil filter. I'll replace that.